I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Lynn Newman who is the Teacher of the Year for 2015 for the Galt High School District. Congratulations and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. So tell us about yourself. Tell us where you teach and tell us what you teach. Uh, I am currently at Liberty Ranch High School down in Galt. <clears throat> Been over there since we opened the school. We're going into our sixth year. I teach AP Government, Yearbook, and Link Crew. Okay, explain what the last one is. Then. Link Crew is a mentoring program The upperclassmen, juniors and seniors, they're trained. Uh, we have a freshman orientation before school, we get the freshmen acclimated, and they kind of mentor them throughout the school year, helping them um, become um, part of the school campus um, so that they're more likely to stay in school. It's an awesome program. Okay. So AP government, mm -hmm. uh, civics, civic education is obviously very important to you. Yes. Um, it seems that there's not such an emphasis, a lot of people think that, that there should be in California, teaching mm -hmm. students about citizenship, uh, their rights, about the Constitution. What are the, some of the things that you do in your classroom when you're talking about those issues with students to let them know the importance of you know, their rights as a voter, their rights as a citizen? Uh, well, in AP government and in regular government classes, the great thing about teaching in social studies is that you constantly have current events that you can talk about every day, and that the students are really interested in that type of thing, um, so that you can bring things that are happening, they just heard it on the news, or they heard somebody talking about it, and you can bring those things in and you can focus on those, so you have high student interest to start off with. And from there, you talk about, well, what have you guys heard? What's important to you? What, do you agree with what happened? Um, and you can refer back to the content, um, what, what rights were in the Constitution? Um, who can tell me the first 10 amendments to the Constitution? Do we still have those today? Things like that. So uh, I've found that using what's happening in the outside world, when, and the students, you know, if they're reading it on Twitter, Twitter or uh, BuzzFeed or whatever, wherever they're getting it from, um, it's an awesome opportunity to teach in the moment um, and then to refer back to the, the content about rights, the Constitution, the foundations of America. Um, so balance what's happening now with what happened back then. So the current events certainly keep them engaged. Yes, if they're, <laughs> if they're paying attention to the outside world. Mm -hmm. um, that's the hardest part. Hey, have you watched the news? No, I don't watch the news, it's all negative. Well, um, that's where a teacher comes in. Well, I'd like you to read these articles. I'd like you to, I'd like you to watch the news tonight. That's our homework assignment. And then come back uh, tomorrow in class and we'll have a discussion. So yes, they, they require a little bit of pushing, but once they come back, they're, they're fired up because um, what's happening in the outside world is uh, exciting and controversial and kids want to talk about those things. So the social studies field I've found, um, it's, you as a teacher have to be aware of what's happening and in touch on the pulse of the news and read and keep yourself up to date so that you can have those great discussions in class. How do you see the student kind of developing or evolving as he or she starts to learn about the civil rights and what their rights are as citizens and what you know they're entitled to as a person? <laughs> well from from day one teenagers come in thinking they have a lot of right <laughs> and you have to um, we have a lot of interesting conversations about you don't have so many rights on campus because of educational quote and, and in order to keep you safe these rights you don't have that I have as an adult um, say at the shopping mall it's very different between what you're experiencing here on campus um, to what I'm experiencing out there as an adult um, so once you get that established then you can begin to talk about um, well, what have, what have you read? What does the textbook say about rights? Um, what do your parents talk about rights? Do they feel their rights are being infringed? Um, and we have a good balance down, down where I teach. We have a lot of kids who are, um, s struggle financially, and then we have um, kids who are very literate. Their parents are very literate. They're very uh, in tune with what's going on. So we have, we have a good balance down there. Mm -hmm. we kids see both sides. and. As social studies instructors, we always encourage kids to listen. You may feel like you know what your rights are, um, but that might be the, different than someone sitting right across from you. They might have a different perspective on what their rights are. And that can be eye-opening for kids. It's very eye-opening, and that's the aha moments that teachers love. Uh, when a kid comes back and said, you know what I just heard, Mrs. Newman? I, I read this, you can't believe it. And then they'll, they'll parrot or they'll say something back to you like, Oh, that kid really was paying attention in class. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 
So you feel good about that. So uh, I know that motivating students can be very challenging, especially when there are so many other distractions in the outside mm -hmm. world and in, inside the classroom. What are some of the things that you try to do to, to keep your kids motivated? Well, I teach a lot of seniors, so from the get-go, they're motivated to graduate. <laughs> that's mm, number sure. one. I think that's the easier uh, job. They see the end of the, the, end of the tunnel. Um, I, th I believe, I've tried to, my teaching career has been based on what does the student already know and what are they passionate about? And if I can find that, it just in casual conversation or in group discussion, um, then I can, I'll often refer back to that student. Well, John, your dad owns a pipe company. If this and this and this happened, how do you think your dad would, and he knows what his dad, because he's been you know, listening to his dad for 18 years or 16 years. So um, starting from where the, what the student knows or feels passionate about, it's a lot easier to move them in a direction than you know, they're not trying to go the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So how do you motivate yourself uh, kind of on a daily basis? Is it the kids that you draw from? A lot of strong coffee. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Students energize me. I'm one of those people that I like people. So um, I might be a little sleepy in the morning, but you have 35 kids pile into your classroom and you start talking about current events or this. Teenagers are just fun. They're not, um, I don't know if I could do little kids. I actually like teenagers. They're, they crack me up. They got a good sense of humor. Um, they're, they're good at critical thinking. I know the public thinks teenagers, oh, I don't have critical thinking. Yes, they do. They can analyze and they can discuss. Um, so that motivates me. I want to be one step ahead of them so that I can pull them, you know, keep them chugging along. And by the time they graduate from our high school, they're literate citizens. That's my goal. So how long have you been a teacher? <laughs> a long, long time. It started in 1991. Okay. And so in that amount of time, um, now have you always been in Galt? Or have you I did a year of um, subbing. It was hard to get a job. Social studies teachers, we don't give up our posts very easily, so mm -hmm. I subbed for a year in the Elk Grove School District and then um, got a job down at Galt. Yeah, we, I was at Galt High, and then when we opened the new school, I moved on over. Oh, okay. Yeah. So in that amount of time, even though it's really not that long, what kind of changes have you seen in education? Uh, well, currently, obviously, Common Core is changing a lot of the structure of what we do and how we do it. Um, and I think actually the Common Core for social studies teachers, I can't speak to any other um, uh, subjects, but I think that Common Core is actually shifting back to where the teacher had a lot of latitude um, as long as they were covering the content. They, they could go in different directions um, as long as they were bringing it back to the content. So I think Common Core is, is um, it's more rigorous, but I think it's actually turns us back to the way that when I started teaching, you had a lot of latitude before you had standardized testing um, and we're on this rigorous day-to-day -day schedule of what was to be taught and when it was to be taught. So that, that maybe creates some more challenges for you as far as uh, developing you know, what you're going to do on a daily basis and, and I would imagine it keeps you on your toes a little bit more. Yeah, I think that Common Core has got all of, it, all of us on our toes, parents, um, administration and teachers, uh, but I think it's for the better and like I said, in social studies, at least in my field, you have to be literate of what's happening. Um, teaching government, you have to know what's going on. So it keeps me um, motivated and I try to stay up to date on, on what's happening so that I can, kids ask questions and sometimes you have to say, I don't know the answer to that. But, but most of the time I try to have an answer or I'll say, I'll get back to you on that. Now, have you always wanted to be a teacher? Uh, no. <laughs> I actually wanted to be in advertising. Okay. Um, but. Those accounting classes were brutal in a business major. So, but what I found was I teach yearbook as well. So that's a creative avenue for me to, uh, you know, I wanted to do it commercials and advertising. So I've had a lot of fun with students in the yearbook because we can be creative. So, but I think I, I found my niche. I, I like teaching. It's it's a great profession. I like it. So did you start out in advertising or did you? No, nope, okay. never got past those accounting classes. Okay. I passed them, but <laughs> I. Uh, in college, some students asked me, what did you like in high school? And I, I loved history. I had a great history teacher my junior year. Uh, and one thing led to another, and the <laughs> social that, studies teacher. And that led you here, and that led you to be a teacher of the year. Uh, evidently. <laughs> evidently. Well, we, we appreciate your time, and thank you for thank talking you. with thank us. Thank you. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Lynn Newman, who is the teacher of the year for the Galt High School District for 2015. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.